The following movie is rated R. Welcome back, everybody, to the Church of the Tone Priest. Big day today. We have, count them, 12 subscribers. I said I was going to get you back! I said I was going to get you back! That's right, the Tone Priest has 12 apostles. That's what it's all about. Um, like a week ago, I had 11, and then somebody took the time to un unsubscribe. And, uh, before that, uh, lost another one as well. Can you imagine that? Two people took the time to press the button and then unpress the button. You know, that was really bothering me, you know? I, was, I lost sleep for, like, literally days. And I was trying to think, why, why, what did I do wrong? Why? 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 You know, I was, I was, I did take days off from work. Um, my wife threatened to divorce me. Get out. And don't come back. My dog wouldn't talk to me. Oh boy. I was just so miserable. I was trying to think, you know, what did the tone priest do wrong? You know, um, what could it be? You know, and so uh, I was thinking, could it be the, you know, the constant spewing of misinformation? Son of a gun. You can see we got a nice field coil speaker set up in here. Or the inability to actually finish a project that we start. Or just, you know, maybe the, uh, you know, maybe a little bit. And sometimes I can be a little bit childish. And, excuse me. <laughs> or maybe, you know, a little bit sarcastic. Quite honestly, you know, if this is a tweed basement, I'd do the same damn thing. The purists can suck my dick. Uh-oh. Um, another thing I thought maybe it was because, you know, I possibly maybe was, some people were offended because I, I made fun of some of, you know, YouTube's most popular and beloved music aficionados or whatever you want to call them this is our first <laughs> three fun. amigos session of 2021 looks like somebody's been down here with the ugly stick um uh maybe it's because i you know up here in the northeast you know we, we can be a little bit abrasive and one priest since you seem to know everything well, last i heard he was happily married to a 12 year old boy living on a beach in thailand been you know, we use some foul language. I got a question. How fucked up are you? And sexual innuendo. This is like six inches long. That's what she said. You know, really, I mean, what could it possibly be? And I thought maybe, well, maybe it's because I'm a, a shit guitar player. Oh, noisy. Just got the noise. And, you know, all the demos I do for, uh, the amps that, you know, eventually get done, you know, the demo quality has got complete shit recording quality. You know, everybody wants to sound like friggin' whatever. Peter Frampton, you know, or maybe it's for my sharing my affinity for horrible music. <laughs> Just my overall jackassedness. But, um, so we went down to nine. But, uh, now we're up to 12. Thank you! And I, I'm sleeping like a baby. I mean, we just, like, what is that, 50% more subscribers in a couple of days? Something like that. I don't know what the math is. I equals V over R. But anyway, I'd like to thank everybody. I'd like to thank the uh, two people that commented on uh, my uh, 72 videos that I've made. Um, Excellent. We need the interaction here. It's a two-way street. But, um, yeah, I thought we'd do something special, and, um, not really. This is just the next thing we're going to do in line. But, uh, what we're going to do today is, um, I thought we'd build another pedal. 
so we're going to build this thing here, a Dragon's Breath Boost. Well, not really. We're not spending the money on the uh, circuit board because, as you can see, this is a very simple circuit. Sorry, pedal PCB. I've already given you plenty of money. I, I think I can borrow your wiring diagram, your schematic, to uh, build one from scratch. Um, this is a, what is it, Catalan Bread uh, Naga Viper Boost Pedal Clone. That's what we're going to build. I mean, the, the Naga Viper is like 180 bucks. I, are you shitting me, guys? Man does not live on bread alone unless it's Catalan Bread. There's like fucking six components in here. That's fucking whatever. It is what it is. As long as it sounds great, it's worth the money. Whatever. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, here's the circuit. We're going to uh, use some of these guys and uh, hopefully build a, uh, a cool uh, treble boost pedal. And I wanted to build a uh, boost pedal because I uh, I had a, a EP booster that I built and I uh, gave it to my uh, my boss. Uh, here you go. Um, a lot of these amps that I'm building are uh, older, so they don't have a, a shit ton of gain, and they could use a shit ton of gain. And I thought the treble boost would be treble boost function would be cool because um, again, a lot of the amps I build are older, and uh, a few of them just have a tone knob. They don't even have bass and treble. So, you know, you turn it up to get the, the right amount of treble, but then you lose the bass. So I'm thinking maybe, you know, we could dial the, the tone knob back a little bit, get a little bit more bass out of it, and then with the treble booster, you know, bring back some of that treble. I mean, that's how they did it back in the day, right? I'm assuming. And um, plus I play a Telecaster a lot, and if there's one thing a Telecaster needs, it's uh, more treble, for sure. But, um... Never had much luck uh, building one from scratch. Um, don't know why. Probably because I suck. But uh, this is a pretty simple circuit. I think we might have success with this one. But uh, we're going to give it a shot. And I'll document it so you can follow along at home. Um, don't try and do this at home. <clears throat> Pardon me. Working on electrical stuff is a, a super dangerous. And you could hurt yourself. Um, so, you know... But in case all the lawyers of the world uh, croak, um, when that happens, go ahead and by all means knock yourself out, play with transformers, hook them up to Variax, just fuck it, plug the fucking wire straight into the wall, I don't give a shit. But um, just don't sue me. But with uh, all that said, uh, that's all I got to say. And uh, let's do it. Twelve. Count them, twelve. Bam! Here we are. Thanks to the magic of movie making, we have a uh, completed uh, board built from hand. Here's all the little components. Isn't that nice? Got a little late last night while I was working on this to film, but uh, it's not rocket science. Um, the way I approach this one is I kind of um, started in the middle, so I started with the uh, transistor here. Stuck them in. This guy right here. And then um, I would just do one note at a time, very methodically, very carefully. You don't want to miss anything because these can be a real pain in the neck to troubleshoot if you miss one little thing. But uh, one note at a time. So we see the, uh, we put the transistor in. And then on the next node, we see that there should be a resistor and this capacitor. So I installed those two and then soldered that node. And then just very methodically went to each node one at a time and Put it all together. So that's what the back looks like. That's what the front looks like. And so I did a, a very brief test. Again, it was late. I couldn't really uh, crank anything up. But um, yeah, she appears to work. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to install the put switch, the uh, LED. Uh, I forget what color I picked out. Hopefully it's a cool one. And then we're going to put her uh, in a box. And I decided to use the... Uh, a nice painted box because I think this uh, Naga Viper clone is going to uh, get a lot of mileage. I'm going to get a lot of mileage out of this one, so uh, I'm going to use the nice box here. It comes complete with screws. Can't have enough screws, and uh, yeah, should be pretty nice. So uh, it's a new day. The possibilities are endless, and I'm looking forward to. Uh, Putting this sucker together and trying her out.
hang tight. Okay, up here on the bulletin board, I have uh, this guy here. This is the uh, foot switch uh, layout that I use. Uh, take a screenshot of that and uh, burn it into your memory. And so uh, that's what we're going to do. We've got one of these guys here, and it's uh, I only have two feet switch, foot switches, feet switch left. These guys can be a little bit expensive, especially when you buy them in bulk. That'll make the bill a little bit uh, excessive. But anyway, they are indispensable. And uh, this is one of the nice ones that doesn't make a, a loud click. It makes a medium click. So uh, only the best around here. So, uh, yeah, let's do it. So I'm working on our pedal here, and I'm just thinking, uh, trying to think why the channel is just hemorrhaging subscribers almost as fast as we can get them. And uh, I was thinking maybe, uh, you know, it might be um, the general inappropriateness of my um, <clears throat> my uh, charming personality. And, oh, you mother... Croissant! And, uh, you know, that's just the way we... Uh, we were raised and we grew up up here in New England back in the day. You know, I don't want to date myself or anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh you know, but that's just how uh that's how we show love around here. I want a way out of here for I mean I'm gonna fucking live here the rest of my life. Look, you're my best friend, so don't take this the wrong way. I'll fucking kill you. That's not a threat. What? That's a fact. I'll fucking kill you. What the fuck are you talking about? No, no, no. I'll fuck you. You know, we, um... The way we show love to one another, or we used to anyway, before this new civic religion was, uh, invented, is, um, you know, to our friends and loved ones, we would just say the most horrendous, inappropriate, politically incorrect, vile, disgusting things to each other. What's a lace curtain motherfucker like you doing in the Stadies? Families are always rising or falling in America, am I right? Who said that? Hawthorne. What's the matter, smart ass? You don't know any fucking Shakespeare? You know, and that's, uh... The guy that came up with the most ridiculous stuff was the, uh... You know, the guy that showed the most love. You know, I don't know what's wrong with this world anymore. You know, it's like you can't even be nice anymore. Oh, Jesus, I'm not going to be nice to this. Anyway. But it is what it is. Times change. Not always for the better, I guess. Why is this so hard? I can't do two things at once. I can't talk and work at the same time. But, uh... Anyway, yeah, I mean, in the past, back in the day, why is this thing being such a fucking cunt? Crikey dingo! Anyway, back in the day, <clears throat> should have just done this right the first time. Back in the day, you know, when you'd see, uh, you meet up with your buddy, you know, first thing out of your mouth would be, uh, Hey, buddy, how's it going? How's your mom doing? How's your mother? Good, she's tired from fucking my father. You know? And it would just, you know, use your imagination. And, uh, yeah, we just try to outdo each other with the most vile, disgusting things about each other's moms. I'm about to say some vile, disgusting things about someone's mom right now. But, uh, whatever. Hard times make hard men. I think we're, uh, people are very comfortable right now. Don't know how good they've got it. There we go. That's what I'm talking about right there. You getting all this? Can't see the viewfinder. But, uh, it is what it is. Get in there. Get in there. There we go. Again, when you're soldering, can't uh, got to go back to basics. You're not melting solder and blobbing it onto the your components. You put a little bit of solder on your tip. That's what she said. Um, 
because it's it's liquid and it, it wraps around all your components and it helps spread the heat but what you really want to do is you want to heat the two components that you're gluing together and then introduce the solder to it and again you'll see the solder melt and then a little like a millisecond later it'll get watery when it gets watery you're done but uh, there you go there's the jumper um, let's clip the ends off here we want to make sure we're not bridging anything here we're gonna make room for a bunch of wires yeah uh, there you go took a second but we did it oh that that clicker is smooth baby smoother than a Coors light it's the right spot on the right day when a Coors light is the only way all right what do we got one two seven more seven more little uh terminals left Hang tight, we're getting there. Alright, since we're trying to trigger people, let's uh, talk about true bypass. I mean, um, guitar players, which are some of the most intelligent people on earth, they hear true bypass and, oh wow, that sounds like some real scientific, high-tech shit right there. True bypass is the best. All that is, is when you flip your switch, it's like, it's just a cable going through you know like the box isn't there because um you have your input wire coming in it's basically this is your input wire this is your output wire from your cables all right let's make a real friggin demonstration here real high-tech demonstration hold on all right so you hook up your effects pedal you got one wire going in from your guitar you got one wire coming out of the pedal and it does that and it goes through all the circuit but when you flip the switch basically all that's doing is that that's all that true bypass is it just skips all this crap and just passes through nothing fancy i don't know what the big to do is about it but uh i don't know buffers and stuff buffing stuff whatever for what it's worth there you go i'm not impressed it just it's just a thing it's not a fancy scientific Bill Nye the Science Guy, fucking, you know, Thomas Edison, Alva, Descartes type of science thing. But, uh, there you go. This is gonna be true bypass. Here we are. We got the foot switch almost all wired up. Just need to connect the ground and, uh, the LED. And, uh, it's gonna go, uh, well... The cathode of the LED connects to this terminal right here, and then the anode needs uh, voltage, obviously, to turn on. So I'll show you how I do that. Look what I found. Wonder what happened to this guy. Good times. Definitely don't need the lint. Probably a spider egg sac. Anyway, uh, now it's time to do the LED. Uh, this will be the indicator light for to let us know when the pedal is uh, affecting our guitar signal. So the way this works is you have your 9-volt supply. It needs to go through a dropping resistor uh, to lower the voltage because uh, usually LEDs are somewhere around 3 volts is what they're looking for. So if you connect it directly to your 9-volt uh, supply, uh, it'll be very bright for about 3 milliseconds, and then it'll burn out. So we need to go from 9 volts to a resistor into the anode, and it comes out on the other side through the cathode, which will be connected to our foot switch right here. And when you turn your effect on, that connects the common with this terminal, which uh, gives the LED a path to ground, which turns it on and it lets you know your effect is affecting if the change in the amplifier is not enough. So this is what I uh, like to do. I like to use these guys here, these little LED socket holder thingies, whatever they're called. Um, you see a lot of pedals, even some professionally made ones where they just stick the LED up through a hole in the, uh, the enclosure and uh, that's kind of shitty in my opinion because it's usually right next to the foot switch and you press the switch you press down too hard you're wearing you know tuck tail is you push this down inside the uh, 
inside the enclosure and uh, nobody wants that. This is a little bit better. There's a nice little ring um, around it to help protect against that. It won't, uh, it's not totally foolproof. You can still push it down. Um, you can even go one step further and get flat top LEDs and that'll actually sit below the ring in uh, this guy here and that'll uh, give you the most protection. You know, sort of like a condom. Good protection, but not perfect. Anyway, so these come with these little rubber grommet thingies. So we stick our legs through there. That goes like that. And first we need to add our dropping resistor to the anode. And uh, you can use what's on the schematic or what I usually do is just uh, a lot of these LEDs that I buy come with uh, a package of resistors. And so uh, I trust them. Yeah, see, so we got some 470 ohm and some 430. Um, for this color, yeah, it's looking for a 2 to 2.4 volts. We're going to uh, err on the side of caution, and we'll go with the 470. This may not even be enough. 2 uh, to 2.3 is not a lot of voltage. Usually it's around 3 or a little bit above 3, but... Uh, if we burn it out, we'll, uh, you know, make some adjustments. So we get our resistor. Okay. So, first we need to connect the resistor to the anode. And this is what I like to do. Hopefully you can see all this. Uh, clip a little bit off. Take our rounded needle nose pliers and make a loop. best we can. Take our dropping resistor, connect them to the loop, right about there. Alrighty. Oh yeah, super professional. These are surgeon's hands right here. Alright, and we're going to add some glue. Oh, uh, yeah. This is hard enough. I can't imagine, like, being Lewis Rossman and working on SMDs. Must be a nightmare. Ball grid arrays. Are you kidding me? Get a little stabilization here. All right. There we go. in the tip. Give her a second to freeze. Check the connection. That looks uh, pretty solid, all things considered. Cut off the excess. And now we need a wire that's going to go to our 9 volt source. So we're going to basically do the same exact thing. I am not left handed. Nice and solid. And to top it off, we're going to add some heat shrink over that. And that one looks like it'll fit. Uh, maybe. A little bit of a pointy thing right here. There we go. Perfect. Get out our heat gun. And there you have it. And on the other side, uh, all we're going to do is just uh, the same process, but we're going to add a, uh, a wire for ground. So uh, there you go. That's how it's done, at least around here. Here we are. We've got uh, both wires connected now. Hopefully that's in focus. Probably isn't. Uh, it's important to put the heat shrink on because uh, 
it's tight quarters here and we're going to be bending bending wires and we don't want to short them out and then uh, have your indicator lamp not work and then I also go uh, one step more and I'll add um, a larger piece of heat shrink around uh, both wires at the end here so uh, let's do that now get in there here we go and again we'll get out the heat gun And believe it or not, this is my preferred tool for doing this. Um, for Other than this, I'd use the uh, little pencil torch that you can get at like uh, your favorite uh, big box hardware store. But um, in my experience, they, they don't last very long. Uh, and it's a pain in the butt to refuel them all the time. It just, it's what we're doing here. This is great. So, there you go. And there she is. Look at that. And then uh, this is going to go up in here, like that. And this uh, rubber, this white plastic thing uh, makes an interference fit back here with that. And then, uh, yeah, that'll be pretty sweet. And uh, this is also nice because, you know, you, yeah, don't worry about it. And as you can see, or probably can't see, um, the LED, even the, the round normal shape rounded one, just barely sticks up above this collar. So it'll be very, a lot more difficult to, you know, accidentally push this into the uh, the enclosure. So that's why uh, we spend the big bucks and we get these metal ones. All right, we're just about there. Moving on. Just taking a moment to stop and feed all the neighborhood kids. Okie doke. Before we go ahead and uh, start drilling holes in the enclosure and doing final assembly, uh, sorry I'm on the squeaky chair again. We just want to make sure uh, pedal works as designed. So uh, right now I'm just uh, plugged into my, <clears throat> pardon me, plugged into my Boss Katana and we're um, terrible guitar player no uh, we are just going straight clean in the acoustic setting so there's your true bypass setting and let's see if our cattle and bread naga viper clone works say that's got some boost. Yeah, this pedal's gonna get some mileage put on her. All right. Now we're getting down to brass tacks here. Uh, we have our enclosure. Uh, I forget what this is called. I think it's a 125B is the uh, size or whatever it's called. But um, as you can see, the uh, circuit board is very small. Should be uh, plenty of room to put all this junk in there. So that's not a huge concern. But um, usually sometimes on the uh, bigger, more complicated ones, you really got to uh, plan carefully, measure twice and cut once to make sure that all the junk's going to fit inside. But I don't think that'll be a problem with this one. So we're, uh, found some, uh, knobs. I found three knobs, all of the same style and color. So we're going to use these. And just kind of line it up. And the, uh, these knobs are, uh, 
you know, a little bit bigger than the pot. So as long as they all fit up top, then the uh, potentiometer should fit on the inside the enclosure. So we're just kind of eyeballing it, making some marks for the center lines, and we're going to do some measurements. And then we need to uh, make a mark a little bit underneath this knob for our LED. And then, uh, of course, the foot switch. I uh, do this from the inside, and as you can see, there's a um, some uh, molding tool marks there, the little circles. And uh, usually that circle in the middle is in the middle, and if you uh, drill a hole directly in the middle of the middle circle, um, the foot switch will fit in there nicely. So that's what we're going to do there. Once we get this guy, uh, the hole for this guy drilled out, I'm going to temporarily install him there, and then I'll line up where I want to put the input and output jack. And just remember, if you want your input to be on the right, when you have it flipped over, it's going to be on the, yeah, it's going to be on the left. Um, and then finally, your uh, power supply plug. Um, again, this uh, enclosure is nice and tall, so that shouldn't be a problem as long as you put it down low so it won't interfere with the, uh, the circuit board and the potentiometers. So, But just make sure you have a little bit of room to put your washer on there and everything. You don't want to get too close to the edge. But uh, make a center line here. And then we'll measure this and find the exact center here and drill a hole and pop them in there. Screw down all the junk, and uh, yeah, whale away. So uh, stay tuned for that. You definitely don't want to miss that. All right, so we're drilling our holes in our enclosure here. We did our measurements here for most of the stuff, and uh, I drilled the hole for the foot switch. Uh, I use a uh, you know you cut a pilot hole and then you use a step drill to uh, make the correct size hole. So uh, the final lining up measurements, we're going to uh, put our foot switch here and with our input and output jack, if you're using a narrow enclosure like this, um, if you put it too close to the, the foot switch, it, the, um, the tip thingy here, this big thing that's sticking out here might touch that or interfere with it or just get in the way. So just kind of eyeball it, see where you want to put this. And just make sure you have enough room. And then uh, make a mark, cut a hole, install, repeat, and done. So uh, I'm going to have at it. Here we are. Got the enclosure all cut up. Got all our holes for all our little pieces. So we just need to assemble it now. And uh, what I'm also going to do is I got a big giant bag of uh, little foam pieces. And... Um, just going to put some foam under, well, in between the bottom of the pots and the circuit board and probably the circuit board and the, uh, the other side just to uh, make sure we don't, um, you know, obviously if uh, the metal of all this crap touches the metal of the enclosure, that would, uh, that would be problematic. So, uh, yep, just some of this packing foam will uh, foam her all up and uh, close her all up and we'll be just about done. Got her about halfway assembled. We uh, started by uh, installing the collar for the LED. Then we put our potentiometers in. And as I mentioned before, we're going to take a little piece of packing foam here. And we're going to put her in between the bottoms of the pots and the circuit board. And uh, that'll be nice. Oh, we got the power plug in there too. So now we're going to install the last things we need to do is. Uh, Screw in the uh, input and output jack and the foot switch. Alrighty. Almost last and almost least, um, before you um, button everything up, uh, let me grab a cable here. Just uh, what I did is um, made sure all the wires were out of the way of the jacks and that the jacks function correctly. Sometimes when you're installing these jacks, you can uh, bend the, uh, the little arm here little arm here and it won't uh, seat correctly with the uh, quarter inch jack so make sure those function well have a nice solid click and also make sure there are no wires getting caught up and interfering with anything and uh, I added a little wire tie to uh, try and keep the bird's nest under control so that's all good there we're gonna add a little piece of uh, packing foam right here 
We're going to uh, squish all the crap in there and uh, put the cover on. And then the fun begins. All in all, I give myself a B plus. All right, demo time. That's what we're doing. We're going through the SX Vintage Series Custom Handmade Telecaster. And um, uh, this uh, guitar is very microphonic. And uh, because of that, you know, my house is not big enough for this thing not to create all sorts of feedback with the uh, Catalan Bread Naga Viper clone pedal that I built uh, to keep that from feeding back. So um, I guess we're just going to deal with it. Because uh, that's how we roll around here. We rock out with our cock out. Yeah. So we're having a good time tonight! Yeah. And uh, balls to the wall 24-7. So uh, we'll do the best we can, but um, we want the full effect. But anyway, so we're going from the Telecaster into the Univox uh, 2x12 cab. It's got a couple of Jensen gold labels in there. Into the MXL 2006 condenser microphone. Into the tube Ultragain Mic 100 built by Behringer. Here's the settings. Um, first time I used this on one of the uh, Tone Priest videos, I believe I uh, was having problems because I used the limiter. And the uh, the transients were just ridiculous. And then it would compress like a half a second after the transient. It just kind of sounded shitty. But uh tried it again without the limiter, and it seems to have fixed that problem. But anyway, uh, so we're going into that, which is going into the Steinberg. This thing, you are 22C, which is going into the mining rig, which is going into Reaper. So there you go. Oh yeah, forgot about the main course. Um, yeah, here's our pedal we just built, and we're using a Fender Bandmaster. Beautiful one. Watch the previous four videos to learn more. All right, without further ado, or a further ado, let's do it. All right, so I'm not going to uh, mess around with the knobs much. I got it set to where I kind of like it so far, even though I haven't messed with it very much. But anyway, it sounds good to me. Uh, I'm going into the Norma channel. Volume is cranked. It is now. Uh, treble is on, like, I don't know, three and a half. Bass is barely cracked. Might fiddle with those. We'll see how it goes. But uh, I'm not going to fiddle with the knobs, like I said. I'm going to put a link in the, the thingy. So you can go straight to the horse's mouth and, um, you know, Mr. Catalan Bread himself will explain what all the knobs do and stuff. And it's a great video. It's a great company. Uh, highly recommended. So uh, more about that later. But uh, let's do it. Yeah, because we're that fucking professional around here. All right. Bridge position. To attention. This is uh, clean without the pedal.
if we had to answer to that one, I think uh, we'd, we'd be uh, looking for a new job. <laughs> music man keep playing all right i'm gonna come looking for you if you don't well there you have it how much fun was that we got a fender bandmaster from the 60s and a clone of a catalan bread naga viper boost pedal oh life does not get any better than that um i know we kid around a lot but uh, i just want to uh, give a big 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 shout out to uh, catalan bread for designing this pedal uh, if you're uh, not into, you know, building crap yourself, then uh, absolutely it's an awesome pedal. Well worth the money, handmade. The, uh, the guys over there seem super cool, and they seem like they uh, do this stuff because they, uh, you know, they love playing guitar, and, you know, they build stuff that they, they want to use, and they're happy to share it with the rest of the world. So, uh, yeah, there's option A. Option B, also want to give a big shout-out to uh, PedalPCB.com. Uh, I'm obviously not uh, getting paid for this because uh, people try to uh, distance themselves from me as much as possible. But uh, shout out to them anyway because um, we use their schematic that they made freely available on their website uh, to build our own clone here. And it worked. First try. So uh, there you go. But um, I've uh, purchased many, many, many PCBs from them from PedalPCB.com and they I've always had great success and they're always awesome. And uh, so big shout out to them as well. But uh, if you're, uh, you know, if you're thinking about maybe getting into building pedals, I would uh, go there first. But uh, if you've uh, got a little bit of experience or if you're feeling adventurous, you can do what I did and just uh, 
this uh, at Tops cost $20, $25. So you just saved yourself, what, $155? And you know how it works. You learn something, you get the satisfaction of uh, building something yourself. And if it breaks, you know, you don't put it on reverb as a non-functioning pedal. You can probably get in there and uh, fix it yourself, you know, because you built it, built it yourself. But uh, all good stuff, all good stuff. So I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll uh, see you next time. Oh, how ironic. Love it. See you next time. Oh, you're a fucking genius, huh? Who forged your transcript, dickhead? Done!